meds not working, and the side effects feel worse? You may not need a big surgery like Terp. I used to think Terp was the only answer. Then I read the latest American and European urology guidelines and hundreds of trials. I'm Evan Hart, and this is Prostate 101. Quick map time. BPH means benign prostate enlargement that squeezes the urethra and causes lower urinary tract symptoms like weak flow and night peeing. Your fit starts with size and shape. Guidelines say water vapor therapy called Resum fits prostates around 30 to 80 cubic centimeters. The Urolift trial enrolled that same size range, but a big median lobe, the middle bulge, is usually a no. Aquablation can treat larger glands, even near 150 cubic centimeters. ITIND has data in smaller glands without a big middle lobe. If you have urinary retention or very severe scores, you may need a faster, stronger option like aquablation or terpy. On blood thinners, lower bleed options like Resum or Urolift may be safer. Tip. Know your prostate volume and whether you have a median lobe before choosing. Do you know yours yet? This is education, not medical advice. Talk with your clinician. Now, how do these four actually work inside the prostate? Picture four tools for the same clogged ch channel. Each clears space in a different way, and that shapes recovery. Rhizum uses sterile steam. The heat kills targeted cells, and the body shrinks that tissue over weeks, like steaming thick veggies so they soften. Urolift places tiny permanent implants that pull the side lobes open. No tissue is cut, so the channel opens like propping a tight straw. Aquablation is a robot-guided water jet. Under ultrasound, a high-speed saline stream removes tissue with a planned map. A bit like a very precise mini-terp, ITIND is a temporary nitinol stent. It sits for a few days, spreads pressure at three points, reshapes the channel, then gets removed. Anesthesia matters. Urolift and Resum are often done with local anesthesia or light sedation in the office. ITIND is similar. Aquablation usually needs spinal or general anesthesia in the operating room. Knowing the mechanism helps you predict the feel of recovery. Steam swells before it shrinks. Implants act right away. Water jet removes bulk up front. Temporary stent reshapes over days. So which gives the biggest relief and which best preserves sex? All four boost flow, but not equally. And the trade-offs matter. The International Prostate Symptom Score, or IPAS, shows the size of relief. In five-year data, Resum cut scores by about 48%, with peak flow rising by roughly 44%. Urolift cut scores by about 36% and boosted peak flow by about 44%, with no new erectile or ejaculatory problems reported at five years in the main trial. Aquablation often delivers the biggest drops, especially in large glands, with IPSS falling roughly 16 points and peak flow nearly doubling from about 8.6 to about 17.1 milliliters per second. The flip side, aquablation, like TERP, often causes retrograde ejaculation, where semen goes backward, though erections are usually preserved. ITIND tends to preserve ejaculation, but long-term data are shorter. Durability counts. About 4.4% of resin patients needed another procedure by five years. For Urolift, it was about 13.6%. Aquablation in large glands was about 3.7% at five years. ITND shows about 6.5% at two years. Cochrane and network meta-analyses echo these patterns. If this clear, evidence-based breakdown helps, please subscribe for more updates. Next up, what recovery actually feels like. What is the week after like? Here is the plain talk. Eurolift often means no catheter, or at most one night. Many men are back to normal activities in about 8.6 days. You may feel urgency or burning for a short stretch. Rhizome usually needs a catheter for about three to five days because steam causes swelling before shrinkage. Expect more peeing trips the first week, then steady gains over weeks. Aquablation is closer to terp for the first days. Plan a hospital stay or short stay, a catheter for about one to two days, and about one to two weeks of recovery noise from the bladder as tissue heals. ITIND stays in for about four to five days, then comes out. Many men avoid a catheter after removal, but can feel urgency while it is in. Pain control is usually simple. Hydration, anti-inflammatories if your clinician says they are safe, and bladder spasm meds if needed. Always confirm medicine safety, especially on blood thinners. One takeaway, match your downtime and anesthesia comfort to your goals. Ready to talk costs and the smart questions to make your pick, money and choices, time. These are approved, minimally invasive BPH treatments and are often covered by insurance. Out-of-pocket costs in the United States can range a few thousand dollars if uninsured and private packages vary by country. 
so call your plan and ask about coverage and co-pays. Now the seven questions I bring to visits. One, what is my prostate volume in cubic centimeters? Two, do I have a median lobe? Three, how important is preserving ejaculation to me? Four, which options fit my anatomy and health risks, including blood thinners and sleep apnea? Five, what anesthesia will be used and where is it done? So six, what catheter time and time off work should I plan? Seven, what are the retreatment rates and the plan if I'm not satisfied? I built a one-page BPH procedure decision grid you can download and bring to your next appointment. We covered who fits, how each works, the relief, the risks, and the recovery. These options can beat old beliefs, and the AUA and EAU guidelines, the LIFT study, RESUM, and ITIND trials, plus the water trials, back it up. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Prostate 101 for evidence-based updates, and then tell me this. What matters most to you, biggest symptom drop, protecting ejaculation or shortest downtime, and why?